This is a battery alarm device and low voltage bat buzzer alarm and lost model alarm. I'm going to talk about this a little bit because it came as shown and I don't believe there were any instructions with it so I had to do some testing to really understand what was going on with this thing and make sure it really worked like I expected. Um, you know, and so when the alarm goes off, does that mean land immediately? Does that mean the battery's only really half used? I mean, and we basically don't know until we test in this case, right? Could connect this into a battery balancing connector, just like this. This is a 3S battery, and so you can see how the, uh, if I can get that reflection, ah, there we go. You can see how the lights light up. So this is the 1S, 2S, and 3S are all, the cells are all uh, green, meaning this battery is in good shape, ready to fly. The fourth LED is off because this is a 3S battery. This is a 4S device. So if I were to plug in a 4S balance connector, it would uh, put voltage on that other pin and we'd have four, probably four green lights. So um, then there's this other connector. Let's cover this real quick. This is for the alarm, and I believe, you know, and they included this connector right here, this little cable. It's basically, to me, it looks like you would plug in this end to a device that would produce an alarm, probably a receiver, and you would set up a channel to trigger when the signal is lost. And then the other two ends, these are all in parallel, you could plug these other two ends um, into whatever you wanted the alarm to go to. And in this case, you could plug it into this three pin device and you want to make sure the black is on the minus always. Black wire is always negative in typical DC power system. So, so that's how that would work, and if you wanted to activate the lost alarm, you would push this little button that's here. You probably can't, eh, you can see it. You push that, and then this fifth LED would turn on, and it would be blue, saying, they're telling you that um, this will alarm when signal's lost. Normally, um, models don't have that, so this won't even be there. We won't use that. Uh, when the time comes, it, it could come in handy. I did not test it, because I don't plan on using it anytime soon. And the weather's getting nice, I want to get out and fly. Okay, so I did some testing on this. Like I said, so um, basically I wanted to see, you know, uh, what voltage does each cell alarm at? You know, what, what, how low does the voltage need to be before an alarm's triggered? And um, does the alarm stay on? when the voltage recovers, like say your battery's getting a little bit low, you go into a climb, use more power, the voltage of the battery is going to sag. At some point this will detect that an alarm on that cell, maybe multiple cells, and does it stop alarming when you go to level flight and cut back power again? It turns out the answer to that is yes, this does not latch, it does reset. And then I was curious also how fast does the alarm happen when low voltage occurs? And it's about half a second or less. I don't have a way to time it in that in that short of a time very easily, so it's at, it's at least less than half a second. So it's pretty fast, and it also resets very fast also uh, too. The low battery alarm actually is on a cell basis, so any one of these cells can trigger the alarm. It's not overall. Um, so if you use a 3S battery, it's not the overall voltage of 11.1 .1 volts. It's actually each cell. So how does it break down for the values? Just like this. So, so here's the battery, and here's the this alarm device here. And actually this is upside down. It would actually be like that. So these, these five pins here be these five pins here. Okay, so you would connect the black into the minus, like I said, always black's minus. And then the other colors, they may be different than yellow and blue and 
red and whatever. So you, you just plug in the black to minus and then the others will just plug in. So it turns out the testing revealed that cell number one, which is this lowest, lowest cell, the LED is, is green. If your battery, if that cell is over 3.67 volts, it's green, meaning you know ready to fly. If it's if it becomes just less than that at 3.65, the LED turns red. No alarm yet. When the voltage keeps dropping because you're draining the battery during flying, the LED will go red and start blinking for that cell. So that would be this lower one in this case, and it will activate the alarm. These two. These two piezoelectric sounders will, will activate, and those are very loud and actually hurts my ears when I do it two feet away on the bench like this. So I actually put tape over that when I was testing it, and it was still too loud, which is great. <laughs> That's a good thing. And that alarm occurs for this cell at 3.35 volts. Well, the device on the back says 3.3 volts is where it's triggered. Well, that's that's pretty close. The second cell up here I ran the same testing for the second cell, and it's good to fly over 3.61 volts instead of 3.67, so it's a little bit lower. It goes red at 3.6 instead of 3.65, it's a little bit lower, but it alarms at 3.23, which is quite a bit below 3.3 volts. So these are are 1 point or are 0.1 volts different, which doesn't seem like much, but when you are at the at the tail end of a flight, the voltage drops rapidly in a LiPo when it's going empty, so that, that'll that make a little bit of a difference. I'm not really concerned about it at this point, though, but that's not too bad. It's it's accurate enough um, to meet my expectations, um, and it does beep when it's an alarm. It's very easy to pick out of uh, background noise. Then I did some calculations because I was I was interested in seeing how much power does this draw, how much will this thing drain the battery versus the quadcopter, which is the i1 extreme that I'm flying the same thing on. Um, so I did some calculations and some measurements. So basically the device here, assuming around you know nominal voltage of 7 volts, uh, feeding this and it takes 28 milliamps, it's using tw 200 milliwatts of power on average. When it goes into alarm, it's more. It certainly is more. Um, the sounders do take a, quite a bit more current than than this 28 milliamps. Um, a, a, taking a 2S battery, for example, um, I, for the i1 I've got a, a 2S battery that I'm going to call 7 volts, because roughly good enough, and the battery is 1150 milliamp hour capacity, and assuming that I want. The, I'm assuming that the charger charges it to 95%, and it drains it to um, 10%, which I really don't know. So it's hopefully it's not draining it that far, but that's what I'm going to assume. That's what I assume in this case. So that's 6.84 watt hours is the energy used when we when I use this battery pack to fly the quad, not including this. And I drain that battery in 10 minutes, roughly, and since energy is power times time, power is energy over time, so the, power, the average power of the quad is this power average for 10 minutes, which is 41 watts, which sounds about right. That, that's, that's expected. Now, 41 watts comparing to the 0.2. Point two is obviously a lot lower. Doesn't seem like it's going to be a concern. And basically, the this device is going to take half a percent of the battery energy during the flight. So it's half of one percent, which really is is tiny. So that's great. The other thing is when the alarm is on and it is beeping, it draws this draws four times as much power. So if the alarm was on the whole time, it should drain the battery about 1% instead of half of 1%. So not a concern. The energy this uses is well worth its function. Um, I'll be taking it out, trying it. Hopefully uh, it should work as expected. 
If it doesn't, I'll try to come back and add to this video and, and highlight what uh, surprises there were. I've discovered something that is kind of disturbing about this low voltage alarm, at least on this one. Maybe I have a bad one, but I'll demonstrate for you. Um, this is a balance connector that is in a 6S battery. And so we've got seven wires, basically six voltage taps, and the most negative battery terminal. And so I've got the negative here. This would be the 1S, 2S, 3S, 4S. This is only good for up to 4S. And right now everything's plugged in. All the voltages are high enough to give all four green lights. The lower light here is the 1S status. 2S status, 3S, 4S cell in the battery. So connected is 4S. If I were to plug this in to the balancing connector, it would look the same. I've just got these jumpers so I can disconnect one at a time, simulating a cell failure, an individual cell failure. So this is kind of uh, interesting. If the 1S, if the first or the lowest voltage cell fails, when I pull this out, disconnect it, what happens? I get a one, I get the 1S cell alarm, which is great. That's what we want. And if it is restored, it comes back green. Wonderful. So far, so good. Now, if I disconnect the 2S, the second cell in the pack, the whole thing goes dead. And I think it's because the 2S from from the 2S positive to the most negative is about 7 volts and I think that is what powers this entire board. And so if it's I think if the second cell gets too low it, it may not alarm. Well, at least if it fails. I did do some testing on the voltage which triggers the alarm and that actually works but if the entire voltage fails or if this this one wire gets to be loose or disconnected that alarm and that whole board goes dead so now if I disconnect the third battery, the third cell, sorry, the 3S or the third cell in the pack, what happens? Ah yes that works just as we hoped and when the voltage is restored it does go back out of alarm but, what if I disconnect the fourth cell, the highest voltage cell in the pack? Light goes out, no alarm. <laughs> That's not very good. I would think you should get an alarm. If I plug it back in, I get all four green. So the second cell and the fourth cell don't seem to generate alarms if those cells become disconnected or or fail in some way.